So Suburban Scavengers is a game that I've been working on solo since June-ish. It's a tug-of-war fighting game where you're trying to get a garbage couch in your house. Um, show you the trailer. Hopefully it's not too loud. Before I started making Suburban Scavengers, uh, I wanted to make a game called Trustfall, and the idea was that it was, it was going to be a multiplayer game I knew I wanted to work on, and this one is one person platforms to a location as the timer goes down, and they initiate a Trustfall. If you don't know what Trustfall is, put your arms down and you start falling. And the idea was you wanted to hurt yourself as much as possible, and then the other person has to catch you before you fall. But uh, I didn't end up uh, continuing with it because of some technical issues. The new idea for Suburban Scavengers actually came when I was listening to a podcast at Gamgeo.community, I think is what it's called, and they had a host called McFunky Pants on Twitter, and he has a club called One Game a Month, and the theme for the month was couch. So in my mind, as I was at work, I was like, what can I do with a couch that I could do within a month? And I had an idea for a game where people were moving a couch down from a building to the bottom and you had two ropes and you got to keep the ropes steady or which crush everybody. And then I had the idea for two people fighting over a couch and the idea was originally hipsters. <laughs> they would be going to get a garbage couch more accurately. <laughs> the early art, I wanted to have some somewhat something better than just squares. Uh, I know it's usually good to just do simple placeholder art, but uh, I made some that looked like people. Uh, I like the tug of war idea so I started to work with the uh, concept. After about two weeks, I had a working prototype with just basic controls. So in the game, you could punch, you could pull the couch, push the couch, uh, you could grab it because you had to grab it in order to pull, and you can jump, bounce off the couch, and elbow drop, which I wanted to have an elbow drop. <laughs> when I was uh, playtesting, the, the basics of it, I apparently didn't have all the ideas squared away and found that there were certain scenarios where uh, it was just a stalemate. Like if two people grabbed the couch at the same time, there was no reason to to move or, or let go until the other person just submitted. So I created what's what I call the clash. And originally it was when both players touch the couch at the same time, it initiates a button mash. And after about three seconds, whoever mashed the most wins, the other person gets knocked down. Um, something to note in this game, there's no health system, it's time. So when you knock somebody down, you get time to move the couch. Unfortunately, the, not everybody is good at button mashing, I found. Uh, I'm pretty good at it, so it felt kind of unbalanced. So I created a new clash system. The original plan was to make, uh, if anybody's familiar with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, the manual bar that they used to have where it kind of teeters, and then after a certain time, whoever's closest to the center would have won but I'm not good enough to program that, so I made a different bar uh, that's like a quick time where the, the little marker will show up and start sliding, and whoever stops it closest to the arrows, which are randomly generated on the line, wins the clash and then knocks the other person down. Uh, in August, so I started mid-June, a couple months later, I got a feature in the local newspaper, and it was just from sending a message to one of the reporters, and like, hey, I work on games, I'm from the area, and months later, he's like, we need stories, so you want to do a story? And I was able to have my game featured in there, which is kind of cool. So it just goes to show, sometimes it's worth sending a message out, even if it doesn't seem like there's going to be anything from 
Uh, about a week after the article, I started working on new art for the game, because now my game was in front of a bunch of people, and I was like, oh, it kind of looks like crap, so <laughs> let me make it look a little better. Uh, I'm not really a, a super artist myself. You can see the, the trees have more detail, and actually, closer up, the, everything is like highly detailed, and kind of has like a, a more realism to it. And that's when I learned how to use a drawing tablet as well. You can see uh, the detail a little more here in the couch. The bottom one looks like it's made out of hot dog meat. And then the top <laughs> one looks pretty legit. I worked on the characters after that. Um, the characters are broken apart like this because I animate them in Spryder. And the idea was to make all the characters modular so I could make extra characters easily. The combat mechanics are all the same between every character, so everybody had the same animations. Uh, except for the victory animations, which that's where the characters get their personality from. You can see the hipster here, he rides the unicycle, and he mumbles snobbishly as he rides it around when you win. Um, there's still more to be learned for, for my own experience with Spryder, um, but I, I do plan on using more in the future, because it uh, it's, it's a lot easier than hand animating everything. After uh, more playtesting, I found some, some little bug problems, as you do with a game when you're making one. Um, there was an issue with people pushing, if somebody was pushing the couch, and somebody ran up to them and wanted to punch them to knock them down, the hitbox was like staggered or something, and the person pushing the couch could always just turn around and punch you in the face and pretty much always land it. So I had to find a way for that person to bridge the gap in order to you know, make it more balanced. The, the idea is whoever's pushing the couch moves slower, and they can't do anything combat-wise, so that's the, uh, the kind of give-take with it. And the slide added was actually taken from the first concept game, the, the Trust Fall game. There was going to be a dive in there, and the slide knocks down the other player. It's on a cooldown timer, and it ended up being the absolute best part of the game. In October, I brought Suburban Scavengers to Orlando IX, where it happened to have first-time crash game-breaking bugs, <laughs> but that's... That's the luck, but it ended up still getting um, a, a great reception, and it actually won a narrative award for best narrative. But there's not a, a lick of dialogue in the whole game. <laughs> what, what, what me and my friends theorized was that everybody that played it had their own personal story about getting stuff off the side of the road or fighting somebody over an object like Xboxes or couches or anything like that. So I guess that's what they heard. After Orlando IX, I decided to start working on AI. Uh, originally, I just had 1v1, so everybody that came to the booth that wanted to play, I had to play against them, and I had to hold back, and it hurt. <laughs> so I would, I would be toying with them, and at some points, I would just toy with them to the point where that would make them win for me. And it's kind of mean, but it kind of felt good. So AI was definitely a necessity. Uh, I do have an AI in the game now. It's it's buggy, but it uh, it does the trick. Originally, the AI was also insanely difficult. Uh, my main test for Kale uh, got beat by it like the first time he played it, <laughs> and he's the second best at the game, so I have toned it back since then. The game is on Greenlight now, so anybody interested in uh, seeing a larger version of it after this, that's the place to go. The game is uh, currently free on itch.io, and you can also find it if you go to suburbanscavengers.com. And uh, there's a link to the green light actually in the game when you play it, so it's pretty easy to get there. I would appreciate your votes. Be awesome. Just before Christmas, I added a third character. Before it was just Thad and Jenny, and now Mall Santa's in there. And uh, it's it's funny watching Santa fight over a couch. Um, he didn't get the personality that I hoped to have on another character because I wanted to make it seem Santa eat. He just does this silly, like, arm rotation dance when he wins. But it's a mall Santa, so he could be drunk. Who knows? <laughs> um, next weekend, actually, is Otronicon, for those that don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, Friday through Monday, I think. Uh, but we're going to be there the 14th and 15th for the, the full days. So stop by. There's going to be tons of games and interactive things there. It's going to be awesome. So that's pretty much everything. Uh, info dump. So urbanscavengers.com is where you can find everything about the game. You can find my personal Twitter at r underscore Dombrowski, facebook.com slash Dombrowski. I also keep a development blog uh, regularly and do newsletters weekly of all the things that I'm working on. 
also a podcast with the guy up front who goes by the Ninja Fat Man. Uh, since I'm Dombrowski, we're doing Ninja Podcast. We record live on Mondays, and we have new episodes released every Thursday. So that's pretty much it. Thank you. So you have Mall Santa, these two, are there any other characters? The idea is, if it gets uh, greenlit, I have eight other characters in mind. They're all kind of stereotypes. Are you going to open up for customization? Um, probably not. I'm the only person working on it. It's, uh, it's a big task. It's been a lot just to get to where it is now. Do you have any uh, couch the uh, the idea is, if it gets greenlit, I have five other interactable objects that, that act differently. The couch, you actually can bounce off of and do the elbow drop. I have ideas for like a, uh, a bookshelf where you can grab a book and throw it at the person, or like a, you know, like a demonic hot dog cart we were thinking about putting in there. <laughs> so the idea is to have other interactions and have that be where the, the variance of the game comes place where people can go and suggest character ideas? Or uh, Twitter. Twitter's probably the best. Uh, Twitter. Uh, and if you go to suburbanscavengers.com, there's a link to my Twitter at the very bottom. But uh, yeah, any suggestions you there, I, I keep up with it pretty regularly. Are all the characters that you have on level by interaction? Um, yes, every player is symmetrical. They all have the exact same moveset, the exact same animations, and they're, they're the same size. How are you doing on Greenlight? Um, Greenlight got about three days of a bunch of bugs and then nothing. So I wish I had my trailer ready before <laughs> before that. That was uh, a lesson learned. You said you used Blender. What other programs did you use? The game was made in Game Maker. Yeah. Uh, all the art that I do is in Photoshop. And then Spryder does the animations, and the music was done in Free Loops. I think it was just Free Loops for this, and Audacity for the sound effects. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, what was the most challenging part of the game? 